I've found some unfinished projects here, unfinished objects. Uh, now you're using vellum as little pockets. So I'll finish them off, show you how you can use them, and then I was going to talk a little bit about vellum. Like, what actually is it? So I'll start off. Um, what are we going to do? A straight stitch here. Oops. No, number one. Oh, I've got to get used to this machine. That's the one. I like the needle to be in the middle. I just feel more comfortable. So I'm stitching through because sometimes the glue doesn't hold so well with vellum because it's, well, what is sold as vellum, which is a sort of acetate or plasticky product, or tracing paper. There seems to be all sorts of grades of what they call vellum from artist tracing paper to baking paper to a much more sort of glossy thicker and more well resilient tougher these are clearly tiny pockets but they'll just slip into a journal and um that's not very close been thinking I heard that there's now a YouTube recording of someone tipping lots of Lego out of the plastic out of a container any container I suppose onto the floor and then playing with the Lego in their hands making clinking sounds and they put it to a black screen because apparently it'll help people sleep I don't think it would help me sleep. I do suffer insomnia. It's really driving me balmy. Sometimes I listen to those songs of, not songs, just recordings of rain, thunderstorms, waves slapping in the ocean. I don't think that the sound of Lego would do much for me. But then I kind of grew up in the era a little before I don't know if it was before Lego, but I don't think my parents could afford it. But the reason I mentioned all this in the first place is I wonder whether sewing machine music, sewing machine music, sewing machine sounds. I might find that interesting. I love the old sewing machine. I tell you what, I mean, I don't mind the sound of a lawnmower, as long as it's not too close. This kind of reminds me of lovely summer days. Mind you, I really like it to be accompanied by the smell of freshly cut grass, which is just, oh, so nice. Oh, I went too far out there. Have a over the second one in a minute you can see here the glue hasn't held too well so sewing's probably a good plan with this or just glue it better if you either don't have a sewing machine or you don't want to sew that one oops goes that way hmm I wonder whether that could go in as a signature yeah I'm just gonna sew that then I can make up my mind later There we go. 
Now all of these little pieces of vellum I purchased uh, probably from AliExpress, I think. But I have recently tried printing on tracing paper. I've got a new printer. It is a little bit hit and miss. I've had to um, glue the tracing paper onto photocopy paper. It doesn't want to go through any other way. And yeah, every now and then it sort of spits the dummy and chews it up or spits the paper. But when it does work, it looks really, really good. I'll show you some in a little bit. So I'll go and finish these off and then I'll come back and show you some examples of vellum. Uh, talk about what it actually is and how it was made. Uh, and show you some of the stuff we've got in our Etsy shop that's using vellum, which um, I have to work on yet. So, <laughs> see you in a minute. Okay, so what to do with these uh, little unfinished vellum projects, which are now finished. So this is a journal that I made ages ago, but it's just for me, and I usually I keep sort of photos, mementos in it. So oh, I think these will make pockets to slip some more mementos in. I just use um, either PVA or glue sticks for pretty much everything that needs gluing. I have a fabric glue if I'm working with fabric, which I'm half certain it's just PVA again, but it does seem to work. So it's not terribly expensive. It's not one of those Fabri-Tac type ones that I've looked them up gosh they are expensive they're like $20 for a little bottle and then they come from the US so paying quite a lot of postage oh, I've made a mess of that that's just me I'm always so messy now I don't like the way we've got this white strip down here so here we go I will use a bit of this uh, fabric glue in Australia it just comes from spotlight and I think from memory it's about maybe five dollars but I only use it for fabrics so it seems to last a long time I mostly work with paper choosing the right side that's it it's usually got I don't know if that'll pick it up a very raised the stitching is raised on the pattern compared to the wrong side where it's very flat sometimes it's very hard to see that though and if it's so hard to see it, I think, well, don't stress because then no one can see it. If I can't see it, no one can see it. There we go. Oh, dear. Now it takes a little bit to dry. That will dry and all be stuck on there forever. And I can't really turn the page now. Oh, dear, because it's going to get stuck to that. So we'll pause this and I'll be back. Well, that's all dry now. And I've actually left it just as one big pocket. And I'll, I don't know what I'll put in there. It doesn't really matter. So the next piece I have is this one. I didn't actually stitch this, so I don't know if I showed it before. It's pretty grungy. Coffee left some nice marks. But I think the background's pretty boring, so I'm going to use... I just found this pack of stamp holder thingy michigis for four dollars and not shop how marvelous is that i don't know what they cost but uh, more than four dollars i'm sure from uh your local craft shop now i've only got one color ink did i do that right oh sort of i'm just gonna put a few of these even though it's all the same thing that one was better and then, yeah, maybe I'll put one down the side. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't matter. It's supposed to do the magic five second hold, but I don't think that matters. Okay, groovy. Now, a bit of PVA on the back. Just round.
my signature. <laughs> well, not quite. So about there. Yeah, that'll do. It's a bit of a, what they call crocodile mouth, this one, isn't it? Okay, next one, this one I thought, now what was I going to do with that? No, that'd be, it's always harder to get things in, especially in a crocodile mouth. I think there, but I might just glue it around these sides and then I'll have an extra pocket at the back because these are tiny. I did stitch through. Yeah, that's the way to go. So it's on some... Um, I think German, a German book I found in my local op shop. Very well glued. I won't do my signature because we only want the three sides glued here. No, there's something about foreign language books. I suppose they could have swear words or other offensive words in them and you'd never know. So I'll just hold that down for a bit. I might need to put another bit of lace down there. It's just here. What do you reckon? I think so. Oh, I've got the PVA. That'll do. Plenty of it. Quite generous, aren't I? I buy it by the five litre container, so, <laughs> and then refill the bottle. I've actually had this bottle. For, oh, look how grubby it is. It's disgusting. But I've had it for, I don't know, five years more, probably. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I might have it for more like 20, to be honest. Now I'm going to have to wait for that to dry. Ah, it always takes longer because it's the glue, the wet glue is coming through the holes. Mm. Oh, well, that's probably all we need to see for now. I've got, I'm got. i going to do the same thing here that I did before. Put that on there. That one's actually been... Hmm... Yeah, I might put that on like like that, so it's almost like an extra page, and then just cover up this back piece with something. That looked quite pretty, and then we've got another little pocket. That's um actually a photocopy of an old Crayola packet on some, you know, tracing paper. It's not actually vellum, which I haven't even talked about yet, but I will. See, that'd be quite nice there. But I better make sure that lace doesn't stick down. Where was that page? There. No. What's the next one? There. <gasps> Whoops. Just moved it. Okay. I'll be back. Okay. Well, I'm going to have a go at making some fake vellum. Um, I did look up. Like, it's pretty hard to buy the proper stuff these days. And I found a place... Uh, I can't remember if it was eBay or somewhere in South America that sells um, vellum made of goat skin, which, as we've already talked about, is not the best quality vellum necessarily. Calf skin is the best. Um, that was $12 for a single A4 sheet of goat skin vellum, plus 40 something dollars to send it to Australia. So uh, let's have a go at this. So I am going to use some old tea light candles. Take them out of the little shell. We'll use this later for something too. There's a little piece in the bottom. Pull that out. I'm not going to recycle that. It's small for me. And take out the wick because that's just going to mess things up. That comes out really easy. Now I've got my mum's old Morley Matic. And I've pop. I've already done a few. And I'll pop them in there. And just scrape them up if I can. Oh, they're tough. Now, I've seen people on YouTube just rubbing the candle over the base of the of an iron, like uh, 
like this. But my iron is a steam iron with lots of holes and I don't want them getting clogged up with wax. So really I'd only recommend do that if you've got one of those flat bottom dry irons. But even then I'd be a little concerned that I might burn my fingers if the wax got a bit small. So I kind of prefer this way. I'm just gonna, oh, it might be easy with a food processor, but then I don't use this mule for anything else. So it's kind of a craft room gardening muley now. My mum swore by them. Okay, let's just let that. Um, and I'll put it down here on the floor. Oh, my floor might get a nice wax too. And just for now, I'll tip that onto a plate. Right, go. So what I've got to start with, I've got a few items. First of all, I found a digital copy of my great, 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 hang on, two greats or three? Long way back. Um, John Seary got, was granted a plot of land in Perth because he was an enrolled pensioner guard and an original, well, facsimile digital version uh, turned up on the internet. So I'm going to try and make this look really old. So what I'm doing is just chucking some of that wax on there baking paper or conveniently or quite often known as parchment paper but it is just made of some kind of synthetic or paper actually I don't even know don't even know what it says on the pack now we are just going to melt that wax right into it now this is a photocopy or you know a print on regular printing paper 80 GSM what I decided to do was actually print it onto a piece of coffee dyed paper to start with. Um, I really want it to look authentic because I want to give this as a gift. Now, we don't want too much wax, but we want it all completely covered. It's okay. We can put a bit more on here. I've seen some people actually rub a candle on. I might try that. Maybe with the next one. Let's see how we go. I think we've pretty much got it. A little bit more up in this corner. Excellent. Okay. Now, what we've actually got is a little too much. We don't want this to end up um, crackling because it's so covered in wax. So I'm going to move on with the next bit and soak up some of that wax. You can, if this was the last piece you're working on, just put on some plain paper. Now here, I found this great website, which I'll put a link to in the information. They actually have free textured paper. And this, that's probably the best picture of it, is um, a photograph of some parchment paper, some very antique parchment paper. And we can see here the lines which on first look might look like weaving, but it's actually probably from the scraping, the scraping of the skin, as mentioned previously. My print's got a couple of issues. I don't know why these lines are there. <coughs> Pardon me. But they will probably disappear with the waxing. Now, I've printed this first one on just raw white photocopy paper. This one on coffee dyed, which it was a bit of a wasted bit. So... We'll have a look and see how it turns out, which one we like the best. Oops, that bit didn't melt properly. Let's put that back in there. And while we're there, okay, I see that soaked up a lot. There's quite a lot in there, so let's just keep going. We'll probably we'll need to put more wax. But so with that original copy, we'll just keep putting paper in until no more wax comes off. And then we'll know that is as sort of clear as we're going to get it. Oh, that's looking really interesting.
Wow, that's soaked up quite a bit, hasn't it? Oh, actually, well, while I'm doing this, um, speaking of the chap who got this land grant, John Seary, Last night, my my nephew Eric and I went to um, an event at Curtin University here in WA where our current Governor-General addressed the John Curtin Memorial Lecture. And he lives at Government House, of course, in Perth, which is, for anyone who lives in Perth, will probably know it's in um, St George's Terrace. And that's where John Seary, he worked there. Enrolled pensioner guards would either look after convicts, uh, many of them worked at Government House. I have another great, great, or whatever, Michael Fennell, he was a gardener at Government House for a time. So we actually do have some family ties, and last night we met Kim Beasley, AC, Governor of Western Australia, former leader of the Labour Party in the 1990s, um, is a great statesman. Great public speaker, talked actually about the Second World War when John Curtin was Prime Minister of Australia, arguably one of our best Prime Ministers ever, uh, introduced some of the welfare benefits that we tend to take for granted now, but gosh, we don't want to be without them with Social Security and that sort of and health. We've got a great health system in, in Australia and we do not want to lose that. And John Curtin was one of the first to really put Australia first and consider our interests first. Wow, that's looking nice. When that's not so hot, we'll have a better look at it. Now I've got a couple more also from this free site. Free textures. And like I said, I'll put a link at the bottom. This one I really liked. Actually, I think it goes that way. I'll take off these edges later. But it's, it, it looks like it was probably um, a vellum, possibly. And it's got some decoration at the side. Now you can see, what did I start with? About five tea light candles. I haven't quite granted them all, but gosh, we've got a lot left. I love candles, but they're pretty dangerous. You know, so many, you hear stories of houses burning down because candles were left unattended. Um, so yeah, got to be careful with them. Someone gave me a whole bunch when they were moving house. Uh, thank you. I think that might have been old Bill, my friend Bill. Um, and I think this is probably a better use for them. Well, for me. So I'm going to carry on until. My paper is all waxed out and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. Now if you have any leftover wax make sure that you label it and store it. It looks a lot like grated parmesan cheese. Mmm, tastes like it too. <laughs> Little bit of wax won't kill you. No actually that's wax. This is the cheese and it's delicious and I'm about to wait. So bye.